we talk about um, history, it doesn't talk about um, people, uh, the people's history outside of the dominant uh, culture. When you go downtown and you stand in front of the um, Coleman A. Young building and you see that thing, that statue out there called the Spirit of Detroit, but its likeness does not represent the people that live in, that are living here. I think just being where I'm from and where I grew up, um, it just feels, I guess you could say feels like home, yeah. feels familiar, feels like a, a vibe that I'm used to. All the hardship and crisis that the city and its residents are faced with, that <clears throat> there's so many points in time where I feel like community comes together and really creates wealth and resilience and resources where people don't think they exist. I love the resilience of the people, uh, that we have the ability to um, bounce back from any kind of situation, really make a way out of no way and keep pushing. So in, in many ways I think Detroit is like a furnace and if you can survive in Detroit, it, um, it kind of it, it makes you into this hard this hard substance that can survive anywhere in the world. I actually live, love living in a black majority city. Um, and in terms of what that means, these days it means being assaulted uh, politically and economically. And I think Detroit is a, and not just labor, but it really is a movement town. You know, you think of uh, really key freedom struggle events happening here, like. Malcolm's message to the grassroots or Dr. King's I have a dream speech, you know, to have both of those be first in Detroit uh, um, is, I mean, that's Detroit right there. It has a certain glamour. Growing up during segregation, so growing up in the segregated north, that was an experience. It was um, a situation where we were forced to kind of live together. So you had people from different incomes, teachers, professionals, and very poor people all in the same neighborhood. We had everything you needed in the community from a poetry store, you had the liquor store, the cleaners, the beauty shop, the doctor, the butcher. You had the pawn shop, the, the, the laundry mat, you had clothing stores, you had furniture stores, right in your community. And that began to change when they decided that they wanted to take the land. This has been probably one of the most um, emotional times in my lifetime. And mind you, I've lived through segregation, assassinations, riots, but it's what's going on here in the city of Detroit now, right now, that I think is probably um, worse than anything. The superiority belief that your way is the only way, and um, that's what causes us to uh, intentionally work to destroy other communities and other people, be they different culture, color, age, whatever. It's this, you know, another piece of the meta narrative that tells us our way is the right way. And it's not okay to have a bunch of right ways. It's got to be our way. And if you really wanted to affirm a community, you would see the one as assets to be invested in, and to be um, strengthened. You cannot see people as a detriment. You cannot see people as those people, other people, poor people. Who's that guy? He said, I don't know, but whoever done it, that's a remarkable talent. Like Henry Ford, put our city on the map by imagining a better tomorrow and then making it happen
through entrepreneurial fire. It's been the media's frame on the message. And I think we have just got to interrupt that.